God's service. You are God's field, God's building. By the grace God has given me, I laid a foundation as a wise builder, and someone else is building on it. But each one should build with care, for no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. If anyone builds on this foundation using gold, silver, costly stones, wood, hay, or straw, their work will be shown for what it is, because the day will bring it to light. It will be revealed with fire, and the fire will test the quality of each person's work. If what has been built survives, the builder will receive a reward. If it is burned up, the builder will suffer loss, and yet will be saved, even through only as one escaping through flames. Don't you know that you yourselves are God's temple, and that God's spirit dwells in your midst? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy that person. For God's temple is sacred, and you, together, are that temple. May God add a blessing to the reading of his holy word. There is a plaque that still remains in the church that is in England, and it reads the following. In the year 1653, when all things sacred and throughout the land were demolished or profaned, Sir Robert Shirley built this church, whose singular praise is this, to have done the best of things in the worst of times. 17th century England was a difficult time. Uh, Christians were persecuted. Churches were shut down. And yet one individual decided in the midst of these trying times that he would help construct a building where a church would meet. To build, then, a building is among the best of things to do because a church building can be a physical monument to the spiritual presence of God, a place where people can come together in a special and holy purpose to do the things that God has called them to do. And as worthy as a task as it is to build a building, I freely confess that it is not a task that I ever aspired to. In fact, it was probably among my least desired things that I had planned or wanted to do. I wanted to just talk with people and have small groups and Bible studies and prepare sermons and things, and I knew little about buildings and construction and uh, it was not something that I ever aspired to. And yet, God in his wisdom so often has other plans. And so while we never sought this moment, this moment has nevertheless come to us. It has come to all of us for this undertaking of building a new facility where the Newberry Town Church of God will meet. And today, we will dedicate this ground. We will groundbreak it. We will consecrate it for the purposes <laughs> of advancing the gospel of Jesus Christ. This morning I remind us that this entire property is in fact sacred territory, that it is a holy ground, that it is done so not because um, we have deemed it so, but because God has deemed it so. Because this place is a place where people can come, where they can experience the true gospel of Jesus Christ, where they can break free from addiction, where they can experience the breath of God's new life, where they can see their lives regain a beauty and innocence that they thought was perhaps lost. Most of all, a place is sacred and set aside because God is present there. And his Holy Spirit leads, guides, and directs. A place where Members and visitors can come, all one, and hear the gospel and feel the presence of his spirit. A place where we can come all together, whether we are old or young. Where God wants to extend to us, once again, another chance to feel his breath, his spirit lead and guide us. Where he is alive and present. And God wants to give us this building for one purpose. To glorify him that we may introduce other people to Jesus Christ, that we may grow closer to Jesus, to understand more of that deepening life, to fill us with that life that is completely abundant, that only God can give. And we've been holding services here in this location in what some may deem a basement. 
when we look around and we see that it is not necessarily what would meet our modern sensibilities of comfort or what one would presuppose a church building would look like. But perhaps God, in his infinite wisdom, has allowed us to meet here this last two and a half years to show us and remind us once again that the church is not about location, but it is about the people. It is about the place and the place that God has set aside, which is in brutality and reality is us. That God's church is about the people who know and love him throughout all time and space, who have experienced the connection with Jesus Christ, where we gather together, and God is anywhere where people gather together to worship him. And yet, there are probably, you, like me, have been asked questions about the current facility that we have. Um, I've been asked quite a number of times about uh, where we meet for worship. People have said to me, is this really a church? And when I affirm that it is, sometimes I get a, seriously? <laughs> or my personal favorite, are you sure? Because it doesn't look like a church. Or even after I've given tours of the entire facility to people who wanted to look at it, they look at me at the end and they say, so where's the church? <laughs> well, the church is where it has always been. Buildings come and go, but the church, again, is the people of Jesus Christ. And the church is right out here, where you're sitting. That's the church. And God's church is God's church regardless of what the building looks like or or where we meet, but that God in his wisdom has now gifted us the ability to have a newer facility, a place where we can meet and even have greater impact because of such facilities. Almost three years ago when I came here to be the pastor, um, we had a different building, and shortly before I came, all of a sudden we did not. We came to a point where um, Decisions were made and understandings were that the building that so many had understood, that they had loved for so long, a, a building that had served this congregation since four years prior to the Civil War, uh, was no longer able to be used. And so it was a painful time for very, very many people. They needed a time to experience grief and loss over something that had meant very much to them. And so God, in his wisdom, allowed us to transition to this facility where we are gathered today that some would deem a basement, but which we have renamed and repurposed as the worship center. And in some ways, when we came in here the first time, there were a lot more cobwebs, the paint was peeling off, things were not as pleasant or aesthetically pleasing as even it is today as we have made a lot of transitional changes in here. But I think that perhaps that is because of God and his infinite wisdom has once again led us to a place to understand that this unattractive building is still used for God's purposes. That he wished to give us a metaphor of what he did in this building that he is willing to do in the lives of each and every single person where he took something that was old and tarnished and worn down and he repurposed it and gave it new life. And that is what he calls every single human being to, that he takes us at our most tarnished, but he redeems us, that he gives us, again, value, that he restores us to brand new. See, it is often in the midst of times of uncertainty and confusion that we have strife. In the last two and a half years, it would have been easy for many of you who are sitting out here to leave the Newberry Town Church of God, to seek perhaps a place that had a more comfortable seating, better lighting, more aesthetically appealing places. And yet, you did not. For certainly this doesn't meet our modern sensibilities, but in the midst of that time you stayed. Because perhaps I think that you understood that the church is more than a building. It is a family. And when times get difficult, families do not turn away and run from each other, they come together and support and build one another up. If you remember when I first came, one of the themes that I repeated over and over and over again, I've already mentioned in this sermon, is that the church is not a building, but it is a people. 
The things that happened in our old facility were wonderful things. There were baptisms and, and weddings and people came to find Jesus Christ where memories were made. And those memories are important. But those memories were really not about the building or the location in which they occurred, but about the people who shared in those memories. Those events then were therefore not great because of the facility itself, but because of the people who dwelled within that facility. The people make those memories. And the people of the Newberry Town Church of God did not falter or fail because we are in this process together. And that God led us through this time that he led us to this place, and now he is transitioning us into a new place to meet for worship. Because that is what the Lord has led us to do. And in that time of transition, there was certainly a lot of uncertainty. Um, there was some stress. There were times where it was difficult, perhaps, to keep everyone focused and positive about the things that God wanted us to undertake. There were certainly many whispered concerns about cost. How could a small group of people possibly raise enough funds to build a new modern facility? Well, it occurred to me rather quickly in the process that we could not. <laughs> we could not without God's help, certainly. And so God allowed us to pray. Thank you, Dave. And he brought us together and intentionally and unintentionally in your own homes, corporately and individually we prayed and we just asked for God's leading and God's guidance and God's direction and in that time of prayer God led he joined people together he placed people with insight and knowledge and forethought and wisdom in order to undertake the things that were necessary that he led us to speak with countless individuals that he led us to visit numerous facilities but he gave us the answers, and even more than we had hoped. He gave us a strong foundation because the foundation of any church is prayer. To seek God and his wisdom, to hear and to understand and to comprehend him, so that we have a strong foundation, as was both mentioned in our scripture reading that Dave read, as well as the one that I shared before this message. You see, the foundation is very important. It's probably the least visible part, but I'm sure that our builders would also concur that without a strong foundation, the building itself could crack or crumble, have many difficulties. And so we need to make sure that our foundation is strong, that it is built on the principles of prayer and seeking God's wisdom, that even once the facility is here, that the facility will only be good and the foundation only is strong was those who continue to seek God's will and his leading. Perhaps I look around and I think that this, in some ways, is a foundation for the building that sets above us. And perhaps God in his infinite wisdom allowed us to worship here in the last two and a half years to remind us of the importance of foundation. That we look around and we see these cement blocks and we're reminded that we are a foundation for something that is built on top of us. And as we are building a new facility, a new building, that there will be many things built upon that building for generations to come. The things that will happen there are not yet even foreseen by human eyes and understanding, but God knows those things. And God leads and guides and directs. In this process, we have explored so many ideas and opinions. And we are thankful for everyone's opinions, their thoughts, their ideas. But now as we transition into a new time, today is perhaps a day where we can put opinions aside that we remove them and put them in the past, that we never allow things that are <laughs> concepts or ideas were not chosen to be implemented at this time, that we have laid them aside so that we together can make sure that our foundation is united to the purpose that God is ultimately and only in control, that we want to come together and our motto be that God alone be given glory, that we can never allow any bitterness or resentment to put cracks and our foundation as a church family, that we want a church building that is dedicated for God's glory alone. A church building that does not bring glory to God and lead people closer to him is not one that is achieving a useful purpose if it is not made in a commitment to God. This week I read a great article 
that reminded us of the purpose of the church. And it's a great time as we are groundbreaking for a new facility to remind us of the things that we have to keep at the forefront of our minds, that every decision we make is reflective of what God's will. And the first of those things in which it is paramount that we do as we transition is that we must abandon in all sense of an entitlement mentality. You see, a church is not the same as a club in which a person joins, and by joining you pay dues so that um, you get certain perks and privileges. A church is a hospital for people who are hurting and wounded, who have sin in their lives come, and that they receive the medicine of the gospel of Jesus Christ in healing. It's not about us getting the things that we want. It's about us earnestly and honestly seeking God's will and doing what God wants. You see, we have to live out our faith and share it. See, I think most of us, probably even including me, I'd say, or anyone here, likes the idea of sharing our faith more than we actually like sharing it. <laughs> but we need to share it with words and our lives by sharing what it is in your story that God has done in your life about the things that God continues to do so that others can feel the presence of God. Because when we do that, when we open ourselves up to God's leading, we are often very surprised how often God decides to use us. Next, we have to start stops focusing on small things that take our focus off our real mission. I'm blessed to say that our church, I think, rarely does this, but we can still always make improvement. Sometimes, uh, we've probably all heard of churches that spend three months with most of our focus debating a, a new bylaw change or a policy wording, which are not insignificant or unimportant things. But when the focus becomes so much about bureaucracy, then we need to seriously refocus and understand what is our goal here? Our goal is to introduce people to the life-changing gospel of Jesus Christ, that lives are changed, that hearts and minds feel his presence that we count our success in the number of people that have come to know Jesus Christ and have grown in deepening relationship with him. Next, we have to stop hurting other Christians. That when people come to us, we can't have an idea that we need to hurt them, that we need to love the people that come into our doors, that we need to do and to echo the sentiments of Jesus who accepted those who were hurting, that he offered forgiveness, that he offered to come alongside, that he wrapped his arms around them. Yes, challenging them, telling them the things that they were wrong, telling them to repent, to change, to turn back to him, but then accepting the grace and mercy of Jesus Christ. And lastly, we must become a house of prayer. Sometimes, as a church, we can want to try to do things too much on our own. We can think, well, I can do this, the things that I want to do. But really, we need to open our ears and listen to God, to pray that he will lead us, because truly he is the only one that knows all things and can foresee the future. And so we pray that we would have unity, clarity of thought, and of direction. Those are things that we cannot forget as we transition and move into this new facility that God has given to us, that when God wants something built, it will be built. Not maybe in our ways, but in his. And if God didn't want something built, it would not be successful. We think of a story like the Tower of Babel. Someone thought, hey, this is a great idea. Let's build a tower to heaven so we can see God. It didn't work out very well because it wasn't God's plan. But when God did give people instructions on things to build, it did work out. He called Noah to build an ark. He called Moses to build a tabernacle. He laid it David's heart and then for Solomon to complete the building of his temple. Because those were God's ideas and they were God's concepts. And so God has been leading us. He has led us to this place that he has given us guidance and forethought. That he has allowed us through this process to understand the things that he has directed us as we moved forward. That even when things seemed bleak, when there was somewhat discouragement, that God stepped into the process 
and he pushed us ahead. He led us to the right people, to the right people to talk to, to the right contractors. He led us to the right donors. We talked about a concern for money. And at one point, someone graciously gifted us $100,000 from someone who doesn't attend services here. $100,000, that doesn't happen without God's leading. And then just a few months later, God allows someone else to gift us a million dollars who doesn't attend services here. I think of the words that Cindy echoed at our <laughs> congregational meeting, whether we should build. Was from the back, she came out of the kitchen, and she <laughs> boldly and proudly pronounced that, don't you see that God is in this? I'm paraphrasing, Cindy. I don't remember your exact words. <laughs> but that God was in this process. Things like that just don't happen by coincidence. There are no coincidences. God has led us and gifted us to that point. That God has given us this building. But now we have an important duty. That he has lifted us as his stewards. That he has entrusted us for its construction and its care. And for the things that happen within it. As we break ground then for that building, we know that it is built by God. That we were there in the process, but God allowed us to be. And so our job is not to do the things that we want in this new building, but to do the things that God wants, to seek totality, his will, to honor him. And as we do so, we honor the memory of even those who planted that church in 1856, those who are in Newburytown, who had the vision for this community that others would see and to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ that we honor their mission and our continued mission to spread their same forethought with those who exist in this community in our present day and for the generations that is to come. That God is building this building. Because hasn't he been with us every step of the way? Hasn't he given us everything we had asked for and even more? Hasn't he been clearly leading us he has. And lastly, I just want to point out that it is God's will that when he builds a building, the building is actually secondary. Because what the thing that is being built represents is those who are carrying out God's will. That a building is a tool, an instrument. But any tool or instrument is only as useful as those who are using it for the purposes in which they have intended it to be used. But when God has built an ark, or he's built a tabernacle, or he's built a temple, or he's built a new sanctuary, those things are about giving God glory and bringing glory to his son, Jesus Christ. The entire story of salvation, about redemption, is about bringing people into relationship, and a building is an opportunity and a tool in order to do so. But a building doesn't replace our focus on people. You see, the Bible doesn't say, so God so loved the building that he gave his son, Jesus Christ. No. It doesn't say that God loved the new family life wing or the connection center or the fellowship hall. No, God loved the world. He loved the people. He loves them so much that a building is a tool to reach those who don't know Jesus Christ and for those who know him to grow in deepening relationship with him. A building is a tool. It has been given to us. It has been gifted to us. And we have worked and contributed to that by our hard work, our dedication, our obedience to God's will and his leading. But it is for God and then for his dedication. And we need to pursue whatever we can to seek God's will and then to carry it out. Because a building that God truly wants isn't about comfort, but it's about conversion. It's not about architectural design or aesthetics. It's about drawing people closer to God and equipping them for the abundant life that he wants all of us to have. And so today, as we break ground, we celebrate that great achievement. We thank God for the gift. We thank God for all those who have contributed their time, their prayers, their money to make this undertaking possible. But we come today not to dedicate or to break ground for a building as much as we know that we are breaking ground of the advancement of God's kingdom to our congregation to grow closer and to grow in a deepening 